Forms and manifestation of public sector corruption includes, but not limited to, bribery, embezzlement, illicit enrichment, trading in influence, and abuse of functions, which can involve favoritism and nepotism. It was also observed that many of such, um, such as lack of transparency, moral laxity, weak government institution, unemployment and poverty etc were significant factors stimulating corruption within the public sector in nigeria now is it possible to eradicate these corrupt practices within the public sector that's the question for tonight and if it is yes tell us how <laughs> oh, lami lami is making me laugh today so please let us share what you have to say remember you can join this conversation uh send us an sms or whatsapp to 081 803 so before we even go into the conversation if it is possible to truly eradicate and corrupt practices in public sectors i wanted to ask a question why do we even have corrupt practices in public sector and i'll hear uti because i've not heard that in a minute let me come to uti um if you can hear me uti yeah yes i said why do we even have corrupt practices in the public sector in the first place before we even think of okay is it is it possible to eradicate it and how do we do that that, that almost feels like a trick question why is nigeria nigeria hmm. answer me that or as they will say riddle me this um i mean the the, the answers are reality that's just what it is we have talked about what it takes to be a good citizen. That's utopia. We should juxtapose that against what most civil servants earn. Um, juxtapose that against the economy. All of that bottom line is reality. So what we are used to in today's civil service is the norm that we expect. We expect to have to you know, grease palms, push envelopes around. All these things are there. One thing I'll probably point out again is the lack of consequences. Hmm. So it's human nature. If you can get away with something, you'll do it. So let's not say that, like, you know, it's a uniquely Nigerian problem. Corruption is across board in a lot of countries. Why doesn't it take hold? Um, because all these factors that we've, I've mentioned have been addressed. There are checks and balances. And if people go to the extreme, you know, there are consequences. So for us, these people, I remember when I was serving NYSC and I found out that somebody who worked in um, the organization where I worked was earning 9,000 now. Hmm. What's the point? You know, I often ask this question to say, why would you accept that salary that probably won't pay your transportation in a month? But okay, there was staff bus. But the reality was it gave her a market. So while she was being paid 9,000 naira, she comes to work, she sells biscuits, she sells everything possible that she can sell to argument. while she's there hmm. to supplement her income. So even for some of the um, bosses who knew her, or well, they would look the other way if she maybe didn't do what she was supposed to do because the mindset was she earns 9,000 naira. What do you expect her to do? Mm. So in truth, all these factors add to why there's corruption. People are trying to survive. People don't have any other barometer. This is what you probably find out that most of the people in these organizations we're talking about, it has become organizational culture. Hmm. So people who didn't even know they needed to do it will do it because that's what they've Should met when they joined the organization. So it takes the few, and you know, I'm sure by the time you tell your story today, maybe that's what we will hear because I've met a few as well of exceptionally principled people hmm. who sit in their jobs, do a good job and get on with it. Hmm. But they are one in a million, mm -hmm. and that's the truth. So okay. that's where we find ourselves. Absolutely, I, I I like the way you have really capped it because I was looking at it. I, I I've been calculating why 
why is there even corruption in the first place? And those factors you called is really, really important, especially that remuneration. Because you would wonder, why would you accept a salary of 9,000 naira, for instance, if you know that even your transportation costs from that place to, to, to work back and forth for the month, it doesn't cover it. So it just tells you that the person just already understands that at the back of their mind, there's somehow, they, some way, they would do some things, cut corners to make money. And this thing cuts across even private sectors, not only even, uh, what's it called, public sectors. Private businesses, you're in a place, you're earning 20,000 naira salary, right? Because you know that you can always get money from other things within the organization. So people do that a lot. But I want to hear your thoughts, Lamy. You know, <coughs> why do you think we have corrupt um, practices, you know? Uti has said it no, all. Yeah, she has said it all. But there's something you always say when you talk about institutions. So probably that's what I am thinking. Do you think... Um, the institution play a strong role in terms of the structure, the institutional No, I bodies. think corruption weakens the institution we have in okay. Nigeria. I don't think the institution weakened, I'm sorry, encouraged corruption. Okay. Because apart from what, um, in addition to what Utia said, mm. I, I, um, to go back to what she said, remuneration is a key role, mm. plays a key role. In and the economy as well. Yes. Yeah. Then the bureaucracy in the public sector. Mm. It is too much. Ordinarily, that you want to go to the land registry to register your land, which is to give government revenue. Mm -hmm. You spend so much, not just the money, the time, the energy. So it's something that should take probably about two months. You can find yourself spending 10 months. Mm. So in order to cut all these bureaucracies and all that, you have to pay somebody to cut it. So if you come to me now to say, please, can you handle my perfection of title? I charge you a lot for it. And when people hear like, ah, why and all that, apart from the statutory fees that they're supposed mm. to be, I tell them, we have to pay for PR. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> PR, from one table to the, to other. the other. And I can tell you, mm. it is endemic. Mm. From the gate mm. eh, of any public public institution, you are supposed to roja hmm. to you, the highest authority. What is roja? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have, it's, it's all PR, PR. It makes my work difficult. Mm. Of course. Because it makes it more expensive and it takes time. Time. Mm. You have to. So I think that remuneration, government should strive. Mm. And I think the other issue is how they employ. Mm. In those days, maybe I wasn't born then, but when my parents used to stay, there was a pride for you to finish school and work in the civil service. Mm -hmm. Because they used to employ, you know, the brightest. But now the dumbest go to the civil oh, service. Oh, my God. No. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. You hear people, oh, you come out with a third class. They don't get employment with the government. Mm. They just second you to the government. You can work with the private government. Mm. Whereas it's the public sector that, that is needs, driving. Yeah. The economy, hmm. they are the drivers of the economy that wants making policies for the private sector. So why do we have to have the dumbest? So it's lopsided. So you see them, they don't even understand what they're doing. Hmm. You know, I go to the government, um, I'm in court with the government. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> they took my brother's car and ah. they didn't even understand. I had to seek out, please, can I see the legal department of this ministry? Hmm. I went to see the lawyer and he was saying absolutely nonsense. And I said, for if, Probably you don't know, I'm a lawyer, you know, we adjust it. I was saying nonsense, and I said, you know what? People were begging me, just pay the 50K. I said, no, I am not going to be. We are still in court, too. Oh, I will see it through. Hmm. Mm. I That's will see it Okay, so yeah. you see that thing you just said now, seeing it through, would have been also part of the factors that has encouraged corrupt practices over the years. Where people say, I beg, I beg, I'm too much in a hurry. Now, I'll tell you what happened last night. My husband was coming back on the way from the farm. Police people stopped him. And honestly, we had just brought the car from the mechanics. So the document, he had the soft copy on his phone. But the physical copy, he had printed it out and forgot it on the table. Because you, you know sometimes we clear out all the documents when you want to give the car to the... So he tells this policeman, see the documents. It's just that I don't have it physically. He must say, you know, they see paper. You know, they see online or whatever. It's okay, no problem. So while they were there seated, you know, so these friend cars were just coming, they were paying bribes. So they saw the way my husband and his brother, they were looking at them, collecting bribes from A, from B, from C, from D. They were just looking at them and looking at them. So they were waiting because they were not in a hurry mm -hmm. to go anywhere. 
Ah, the next thing, by the they now went and met them. Please, want to buy people cook. You people come and be going. You say, no, ah. <laughs> say, no, no, come and be going. They are gathering evidence. Do you understand? Because it's, it now look like again, mm -hmm. uh, because the car has my press sticker on it. Mm -hmm. okay. So it now look like again, ah. You know, this one, are you sure there are not, there's no hidden camera somewhere? Yeah. yeah, so you see, sometimes, you know, that ability, so I, I just wanted to harp on what you said. That ability to wait it through, that you My say, you know what? My getting tired. Yeah, he will be tired. That I is the thing, because mm, Nigerians tire you out. I have the, to This system. But well, let me hear Elsie's um, thoughts on this. I'll probably share your experience, you know, if you've had any, with government parastatal, then I'll share my story as well. <laughs> I don't know where you want to start sharing the story from, but I think Uti and um, Lami has really covered it. And that bureaucracy you're talking about were created by people but. in the same bottleneck, in the same um, offices, because they want to ensure that those of us, people like me, who would say I don't have time, would not have a choice than to pay that money. Hmm. You know, and I envy people. There is uh, one of my former colleagues, you all know her, Ekene. Hmm. Ekene will tell you that she will not, <laughs> hmm. she will not give a bribe, and she's not joking. Hmm. Even if you find her and she understands that she has done something wrong, she would rather tell you to cut her ticket for her and she, and she won't pay go legally. and pay it legally mm. in the that's bank, a, that's come an back to pick, of a good and that citizen. is what she is doing. But I'm, I'm being very honest here. I don't have that patience. I don't have, even when it is to do driver's license, car renewal, I'd rather sit in my house and send a WhatsApp <laughs> message. I'll send you the <laughs> money, you send me my papers. I'm sorry, I'm probably part of the problem of um, the country. Mm. However, you cannot blame people like me. Mm. Because it is what it is. If you go into that place, apart from the bottlenecks they've created, the environment is just not conducive. Mm. You see people talking and to And they are you very rude. Extremely rude. So I remember rude. when I had to, because before you see me in a government building, it means that I have to. There is no other way around it, mm. you know. Um, I think it was post office, my first encounter going to pick up something that was sent to me um, from, you know, and I got there. All I do is I have to be in my best behavior. I smile. Same for me. Whatever you say, it's okay. It's okay. How are you? Fine. Madam, I never chopped today. Do you want more? <laughs> do you I would just say whatever I have to say to make you feel good because at that point, they act like they are. Your God. They are the, the gate men to the gate of heaven. So mm. if you don't respond to them, they know you need whatever document you came there for. So they know they have you by whatever it is they feel they have you by, and they will treat you anyhow. So first and foremost, I go there with the approach of being the nicest. All the niceness I don't have, I will bring it in. I, I mean, it, it I doesn't also mean do that. that. I also do it doesn't that. mean that I'm an unruly person. I am not. You just but patronize you have to be them. Extra nice. Hmm. You cannot go in there and they treat you as um, people who understand that they are rendering a service. No, they are not rendering a service to you. They are doing you a favor, and that is how they behave. <sighs> so if you want to, except you have the strength to go through it. And again, going through it is, is tricky because mm. they, because we've created this corrupted environment, it means a lot of people don't even have everything they're supposed to have in terms of car registration and all. So when they stop them, they will rather, you know what, let me just bribe them and go ahead. But mm. if you have everything and you stay there, if you're also not strong-willed or connected to a certain level, you go to the uh, police station and they will frustrate you as well, even knowing that you are at your rights. They will tell you, you think that, you think that now you don't know, now you know I'm past, that's what I yeah. now you put us for here. Okay, so, so if you don't have the energy mm. to go through all that mess mm. because you are trying to fix Nigeria, then mm. you probably okay, so, be on my own so, Okay, so, so I have two stories to share quickly. I will share before, because we need to go on a break, then we'll come back and open our phone lines. When Fashola was governor of Lagos State, I remember clearly when the housing unit, when he built the housing unit, the schemes, and it was time for people to go and apply. Honestly speaking, I had had that mindset of ah, government, I beg, there's always bureaucracy and all mm -hmm. of that. I don't think it will ever be possible. But I went to a friend of mine, um, towing a house, and her brother had just won the three bedroom apartment. So he was not telling me Sorry, that. Sorry, won. Oh, you're going to pay for it. Actually. Of course, you. you okay. It was a. It was like uh, so. What you do, you it's apply. Beat. You won the beat. Yes, you would. Okay. No, you would apply. They would not do a raffle. Okay. So mm -hmm. you win. So if your name is you picked, you win. So what he now told me was that hmm, everybody at that time was going for the three-bedroom apartment. That's it. Let me tell you the trick, my sister. 
if you really just want to get the property, don't focus your mind on the three-bedroom apartment. Go for the one-bedroom apartment. Nobody at that time was applying for the one-bedroom apartment. So mm. What I did, and the truth is, no, you, you didn't go to any office. You go online to the portal, the Lagos Homes portal, type all your documents. And again, the only the most important thing that you needed to have was your up-to-date tax um, clearance, mm -hmm. your tax papers, up-to-date. So I had that because I was paying taxes for my business. So I was able to, so it was not because you were famous or something. Nobody wanted to see your face. In fact, they did not see who was applying until the day they would hand over that you have won, you've been awarded a certificate. Then they would now call you to come and pay your uh, down payment and everything and start your mortgage, it starts to run. So my point is, when we did that, everything was done online. And the, the, the people that won those bids, if you go to the estate today, they are regular people. It was, okay, I won, I, LC, go and apply. LC did, she won, you know? So I'm just trying to tell you that. How was he able to achieve that? Because then when you go into Alausa, for instance, there was no such thing as bureaucracy. It's everybody, if they tell you go online, you go online. So today, I went to the immigration office. I, I mean, I, I must give a shout out to Mrs. Um, let, me, let me pull out her name. You know Yoruba names? You people. <laughs> let me pull out her name. But she, she is an amazing person. And let me tell you why I needed... Also, I needed to share the story. Mrs. Ade Sokan, that's her name. Mm -mm. Ade Shokan. Shokan. Okay, mm -hmm. that's her. So <laughs> I took Shokan. a picture so that you see her. She is an amazing woman. So this woman was posted to the Festac Immigration Office. She's the head in the Festac Immigration Office. And she was, so I didn't tell her who, who I was, you know. But you know, when I reached out to a friend of mine that gave me her number to go and do my um, passport, you know, I've been telling people that I want to do passport for a mm -hmm. long time. She said the first thing that came out of her mouth was that go online and go and do your registration. When you make payments, then you cannot come to us. Mm -hmm. That was the first time in my life I would hear an immigration officer tell me to go online. But that is, that is no! what the rule is, right? Uh, 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 uh. I still call the person that normally does for me, Nikoi. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That one gave me bill. It's okay, just pay this amount of money. Mm -hmm. Nobody told me to go online. Because he will go back and go online on your That's behalf. what I'm saying. So I went there. Today, with my sleep and everything. Oh, have you made payment? I said, I made payment, but the sleep didn't show. She was so nice. And it was not even about me. So she didn't even know who I was. Guess what? She was not telling me that. Do you know that she walked yesterday because she noticed that the backlog was so many. So she, there are over 300 people. She settled them yesterday just to clear the backlog. So on her own, she was now telling me that there are buildings in that place. I had never been to the place. She wanted to show me the videos, but I told her at a later time we would bring her to. Let us just see. We need to celebrate good people. So now, Festac was dilapidated. She said, Uwa, even your dog, you will not allow your dog to stay in this place before. But see what happened. Goodwill. She had the mind to do what was right. And a lot of people within the community and different people just started coming. They will support, oh, take laptops, take computers. Somebody came and built a whole building, a whole block of waiting area for them. If you go into that place, there's sanity. So everybody's treated like a human being. So at the end of the day, we, are also, we are also solving our corruption problem. No, I'm just trying to explain to you that. No, you I see? understand you. But I'm so while we were in our office, the other man there was actually sent by the controller general. Mm. So I was now telling him that, you know, I just wanted to see her because this was the first time I was experiencing that. I'd never, I've done how many passports in my life. I, nobody has told me to go online. Go where? You just bring the money and they will do it. And, you know, of course, they will double the money. So you're happy to no, go but, so wait. No, but I'm also telling Hold you on, that the online finish. thing just started. You did not have the right before to wait, go but, online. But let me no, even explain. Are you saying you were happy to go online? Oh, yes. So because I was paying the official... Of Fee. And when is it going to come out? Hold on, let me finish. So this is this man that was sent. I was not telling them how we took stories two weeks ago about nice. the excess pa yeah. excess passport that people have, not picked. people have not picked. He said the controller general sent him. So he's going from off um, immigration office to immigration office. So he just happened to have entered while we were talking. So he was saying that there are so many reforms happening. But you see, Nigerians, we do not see those things happening. So at that point, we generalize. And I said to him that no. There are good people within the system, and it is our duty to also project Guess those good what? people. Ooh, they also move her from there. Because her subordinates will not like her. So they she said something. Some money. They also move her So she them. said something. Give her one year, they will every move her. Thursdays. They will move her. Wait, move. every Thursdays, what she now started doing every Thursdays within the offices, she, taught, she teaches them 
what's it called? She does something they Ethics. call no, 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 mind trainings, mm. where she's reforming their minds to start to customer centric, how to treat mm. customers, and how to go out of that mindset of bribery that's and corruption. That's one of the what things she did too was do it RRS at the time. Is so. It's now, I don't that. like you laughing, Lamy. Wait, let that laugh. laugh. <laughs> the fact that you've experienced the good part does not erase well, the bad part that we know is there. So, if my boss uh, in the civil service, uh, uh, in the immigration that is paramilitary, if it's teaching me something, wouldn't I appear to like... <laughs> no, no. no. Give but I'm trying them to tell five you that. minutes of her that not being there, they will revert back. I'm trying to tell you that, mm. you see, in the heat of all of these things happening, there are pockets of reforms that we must celebrate. Okay. And when we see people that are exceptional, mm. right, let us also project those. What ones. is her name again? We'll take a break. Mrs. Mrs. Ade Ade Shokon. Shokon. Mrs. Ade Shokon. You are Today. celebrating. We are celebrating. But we have other departments. <laughs> but we'll take a break. When we return, I will hear from Uti, then we'll also open our phone line. Stay with us. All right, so if you're just tuning in, it's our ladies' night out, and we're focusing on our public sectors and asking if corrupt practices can be eliminated. And my answer is yes. We just need to have the right person. So please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Uh, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 And our phone line is now open. Please, when you're calling, remember the rules. Keep it within a minute and turn off the volume of your television set. Uti, over to you. So you heard my story. Let me hear your reviews. <laughs> Remember I said that there's one in a million. Yeah. The reality is that we've all, everybody has had at least one story where somebody shocks them. Mm. I've had it in various different, of, I mean, the guy who um, does my driver's license, I can't count how many people that I've sent to him. He's efficient. He, on time, he's ready, he's ready. Come and pick it up. You're in, you're out, and you're done. So we do have those people. Is it the official rate? down to the individual. Because Pardon? this is the first time I'm paying at the official rate. Is it at the we official rate? Well, collect the passports first. Before <laughs> that, I was going to say that you do out. Wait, Which your official papers. rate? Go so, ahead. It, but it's down to the individual. Mm. I mean, the so the funny thing about this online payment, it has always existed. Because every time that I did my um, passport abroad, they always, you go and pay at the website. So that website has always been there. So I don't know if it wasn't in use in Nigeria. But it? over there, that's where you go and that's where you fill out all your documents and register because they tell you, oh, if you don't do it there, it doesn't transmit to Abuja. But the reality of it is, as you were telling this story, I remembered the com some conversations that I had this morning. I don't know if you, you read the reports of the ports. You mm -hmm. know, when um, the president was in town, he went to Abapa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how in 24 hours, they cleared the entire place. Mm -hmm. The chaos and everything that exists in our ports was cleared completely because the president was visiting. Mm -hmm. So it's not impossible. I mean, I know that you say, oh, they're just clearing it for one day. But it is not impossible. It is possible for us to be efficient. It is human nature. This is where we talk about institutions. What processes are in place? What checks and measures are in place? Risk management, continuity management, planning. The things that we all do in private businesses today, mm. do the equivalents exist in the public sector? Who talked about the quality of people that go to work in the public sector? Lamy, yeah. Let's not talk about the ethnical divide that also happens in the public sector. So we don't have the best hands, but these decisions that are made by these um, institutions or these organizations, as I would rather call it, they change lives. These policies can shut businesses down overnight. Mm. But we are happy to say, uh, public sector, just, just go. I remember when I first came back to Nigeria, I can say this now, I was obsessed with Lhasa. I wanted to work at Lhasa. Every, called everybody I could call to say, you know what, I wanted to get into Lhasa. Until I went to Elasa office, and I was like, huh? <laughs> no. no. And somebody was laughing at me like, no, Lhasa is cream of the crop. This is during the height of the Pashala government. You know, Lhasa was hot cake. All the things I had heard and seen, I was like, I really want to be part of this. When I got there, I was like, you know what? Skrr. Mm -mm. We ain't doing that. <laughs> Let me take silence. 
Oti, <laughs> let me take Silas Hello. from Benway State. Thank you for joining us, Silas. <clears throat> Silas, are you there? Did we lose him? Okay. <laughs> well, I was going yes. to say before you took... Um, yeah. I'm not saying that it's not possible for there to be reforms or for you know, people to come in and change. But what I am against is why should it be dependent on one person? One person, yes. So when the person is not Leaves. there, you know, we go, back, we go to back to status quo. So, so we don't have an institution. Mm. So it's not, does it, there are people like that, but how long can they stay? Mm. Before you know it, they're going to move her. Mm. Because even her subordinate would not like what she's doing. Yeah. Mm. So there's already a sabotage from within. From within. You know, it, it, well, it was interesting that Uti mentioned, because she had actually worked in the U.S., you know, in the, the, the Nigerian consulate in the U.S. So maybe that's why her own orientation is different. Her mindset is different towards some of these things. You know, but yeah. the truth is, eh, go ahead, Uti. No, no, no. Trust me. She came like that. Okay. When you go to the Nigerian embassies or high commissions abroad, boy, you're stepping into Lagos. Hmm. Chaos, I was going to say that. that. Your, you gonna, even worse. You got no. I remember the High Commission in London. I went to take a ticket, and there was a rubber band holding the ticket machine together. And I thought to myself, "How in we're in? Uh, we're frigging in the UK." So no, no, no. She came like that. I okay, just she want came, to that she came. She uh, came. What's it called? Follow up, baby. And I spent ten hours trying to get my passport in the UK. Mm. Got nothing to do with the country. Mm. It's her. <laughs> yeah, Elsie, I've not heard you in a minute. <laughs> Where do you want me to come from? Oh, I don't understand again. What do you want me to say? <laughs> say something. Like what? Because you know? now you have come to paint them good. Like, we are the ones that don't understand what we are talking about. Okay, yeah. so what are the solutions? What are so the so solutions? I, I think, um, is it possible to have enough good people in the system that, you know, that fizzles out the the bad ones Ooh, but let me take possible, benjamin but... let me take benjamin from imo state first then i'll come to you Elsie. hello hello hi benjamin thank you for calling thank you this my, my... Hi, benjamin. Thank, you for calling. thank you very much my my uh, uh, take on the issue of whether corrupt practice could be stopped in Nigeria, uh, I am of the view that it is possible, but uh, it must be a war that uh, starts from the apex, from the top. Mm. Uh, for instance, what I've said in the police commission in Imo State, now the Imo State Police Command. You see where the commissioner of police is talking tough to fight corruption, but the men under him are sabotaging his effort. Mm -hmm. And each time you talk, they will say that they make returns to the organ that the instruction is from the top. Mm. And it's ridiculous. Before them, even in, even the detainees are asked to pay money for food to be brought to them. Their relations will bring food for them and they will say no, the policeman will collect money. And for you to see your relation, you need to pay money. This is no longer issue of pay money. Pay money is something that, that, that has come to stay. So, but if reasons are done and the well reports are made and nothing is, so, the corruption continues. Hmm. You find it difficult to decipher whether the man at the helm of affairs is actually the person directing the corrupt practices to go or not. Hmm. So the issue now is that because they don't allow people to go into the police station with telephone, you have no way of getting that information the or evidence. even giving the person involved. Hmm. And if you, well, if you write to say anything, if you say abuse lawyers, if you write to say anything, they will say you should rather order you out of the police station. Hmm. But let's accept it. And nothing will happen. Thank so you. The, the, whole, the people at the helm of affairs need to, to change. put a check to it. That is, there must be a machinery to watch the people working for them on that. Thank you. And Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you so much. So let's talk solutions. Yeah. Mm. I like what he has said. Um, first, for me, would be the economy, like um, Uti opened this conversation with. The economy is bad, mm. right? You cannot, surviving on what our minimum wage is, I don't know how that is done, mm. but it is, it is a problem. Mm -hmm. Now, also look at the pay gap between your president 
and the minimum wage, mm. or the governors and the minimum wage. It takes them away from the reality, and it makes them not understand what we're talking about when we're talking, because they have laws, they have income, they have in inflow of cash that exempts them from what the reality really is. Mm. And then you go back to the judiciary. If I say I want to face the matter, and go through it, and exercise Legally. my rights, mm -hmm. please, how long will I spend the in The rule of law. Mommy. <laughs> Let me take Charles. <laughs> Charles, good. Thank you for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, well, my take is uh, you, you, you were saying something about uh, how your experience you had at the immigration office today and uh, how you were attended to there. Well, my, my position is that I think we should be more concerned about the institution itself. Because sometimes when you, when you have somebody that is very committed and dedicated to a particular job, the person comes comes in and do her own take and leave. Some mm -hmm. other person comes and you see something else, maybe there might be corrupt parties or two. Yeah. I can remember when Dora Kunili was in NAVDAC, where she was DG of NAVDAC. That place was as in was very effective, very efficient and, and every day you see NAVDAC really working. But today in recent time, I can't even tell you who, who is there, as in that institution just died. Mm. So I think we should be focused more on trying to like see build the system, how we build an institution, so that irrespective of who comes in, there should be a lay down a standard, or lay down procedure Absolutely. of how that particular system, uh, that particular institution works. Thank you, Charles. That's, that's a fantastic. That's a fantastic. Um, what's it called? Solution. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it takes us to political will. Mm. I think that's the only thing. That's where we can start from. Mm. Where the co political leaders are willing to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. If they start from there, it will definitely have a ripple effect. On, mm. You know, it will trickle down. Yeah. So it start from the administrative measures. You know, they have to improve. You know, the light of the welfare of civil servants. Mm. The selection processes for the employment. Mm -hmm. Then they have to make it. You know, corruption, um, there has to be deterring, um, deterrence. Mm. Consequences. And yes, and probably streamline the bureaucracies, yeah. make civil service appealing mm -hmm. you know, to the younger generation, mm. and also strengthen the judiciary. Yeah. Because I think that is where everything boils down to. If we don't have a good, if the judicial system is in comatose, nothing can be achieved. Moved. Okay. That's why I said, sorry. Go ahead. That's why the court way you know, um, locked down for two months and everybody appeared to sing. Mm. It was good for the political class mm. because there's no way to channel your rights. This Twitter ban that happened would not have happened if the mm. courts were on because I can show that by the next day, a lot of human rights lawyers will be in court. Will be in court mm. So yeah. it lingered because of all of this. Court shut okay, down. so let me take Albert from Warrior and I'll come to you, Uti. Thank you for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. Hello, good evening. Yes, thank you for calling. Yes. I I was watching uh, the EFCC chairman talk recently. He talked about fighting corruption and fighting corrupt people. Mm -hmm. Now, and I I think he got it. People talk about fighting corrupt people rather than fighting corrupt. Sorry, people talk about fighting, fighting corrupt persons rather than fighting corruption. Fighting corruption means. You give people food to eat. No hungry man can be faced with an opportunity to be corrupt eh? mm. and let it go when he has a family and uh, people to take care of at home. I think that's where it is. When a man is hungry, when a man can't feed, you don't talk of being, being uh, you don't talk of being, uh, let me say, being okay. You, when, you, when you are tempted, you know, you don't give in. Mm. You know, it takes God for somebody not, you know, to fall when the temptations come. I think that's the way I see it. Thank you so much, um, Albert. Um, Uti Elu, you have a comment, and I want you to also comment on, on, on the conversation. Yeah. Okay, so comment is from Benson. Hi, Benson. He says, good evening, ladies. The situation may clearly be endemic, but it's a personal choice for it to be malignant. This is to affirm Uti's point. How much are those that discern courageously? Um, how much are those that discern courageously help to liberate? I think there might be something missing there, but um, thank you, Benson. I, I mean, I think we sort of said it all. For me, uh, cause and effect. 
one of the things that I remember, one of the stories I used to hear from the from the time of um, of um, Dr. Finley in Nafta Cresta So was the fact that she it was a don't spare the you spare the rod spoil the child. She there were so many stories I heard at that time of people losing their jobs over little things because it was following the rules and teaching people. Mm. So that mindset, that understanding that, look, if there's no consequence, we're human beings. Mm. There's a reason why in, in other countries, there are cameras and there are things to capture when you break the law or the road. Because trust me, if there's nobody, it's just like us right now. Nobody's at the traffic lights. The bike's just right through. And is there any consequence? No. For the one that it's a, it's a driver in a car, they will beg, they will bribe, and they will go. So if the alternative is easier, you will take it. Mm. So we need to put those processes in place. And it's not so much, I mean, I think of them as organizations. I don't think about them as institutions because we don't have anything that has been institutionalized. Mm -hmm. When you institutionalize something, it can't help itself. You do it. That's the way things are done. So we haven't institutionalized anything here. And I will say that the solution that I will speak of is that of the office of the good citizen. Hmm. How do we as Nigerians become good citizens? That in the face of a difficult decision of yes or no, right or wrong, we will do the right thing. Because there are exceptional people. There are people who have principles. Hmm. It sounds funny. I know maybe you say I live in utopia. But that's the reality. We have to start to raise people who even understand what it is to be a good citizen. citizen. So I think we're going because to... Because we blame the government a lot. Mm. Let, me, let me just say this. We mm. blame the government a lot. And yes, there's that element of role modeling and what our leaders do and what we see. But I, I like to use the Lekki Expressway as a subject. We've talked about train tracks as a subject. Buari is not the one pulling down the bollards. He's not the one cutting the net so we can't cross. All these things are being done by people, by citizens who are vandalizing and destroying things that have been put in place to ease the life of the populace. Now, some of these things may not be well thought out, that is for sure. Mm. But does that excuse vandalism? It Absolutely not. Okay, so Uti, I think I, I want, to, the reason I want to cut you there is because Thursday, I think we would continue that Office of the Citizens, you know, and I like that conversation. We'll continue it on Thursday because, again, if I had paid you 250000 350000 to secure a federal government job, if I get there, I'll first of all make back my money that I, I paid you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is the role of the citizen in this corruption. Sorry, I didn't see the practices. nexus between what she has said and what you just said. It's the same thing. She's mm -hmm. talking about the office of the citizens, us being responsible. I'm saying that some I'm, citizens... I'm on the show on Thursday. Yes, you are. So, we are coming, <laughs> we are coming to do a part two. So, in, in case you love the show today, make sure to tune in on Thursday. We'll do a part two of this conversation where we now talk to ourselves as citizens thank but you very Elsie. quickly i know that in 30 seconds i know i won't be here on thursday but um to add to that i think government needs to also begin to look at how to use technology to create the, uh, processes i was going to come there that would lead us where we want Absolutely. to go because something like that's there with beating traffic lights and you getting an sms and uh, your, your bill is piling up mm. but i don't see that happening anymore Absolutely. so they need to find a way to use technology Absolutely. to cop this issue Absolutely. thank you elsie godwin enjoy thursday. we'll see you on thursday <laughs> but we'll see we'll see uti and lami on thursday we'll see yeah. you guys thank you so much all right so before we go do ensure to follow us on instagram at way show africa you can interact with us drop your comments like our post importantly we're planning something huge a giveaway just to say thank you to you for believing in the ways brand and following the conversation so do well to follow us now at way show africa on instagram like comment invite your friends and always share the links so that other people can watch all right so if you missed today's quote here it is again there is no compromise when it comes to corruption you just have to fight it We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.